We've got stories to tell How the human race should be erased from space We're horrible people and deserve to die If you don't believe me, then I'll tell you why We've caused genocides and mass extinction Humans causing bad pollution Amazon is burning down California's on shaky ground Ted Cruz and Cancun people deny the moon Gun crime is on the rise, hypocrisy and evil lies Leadership is on vacation, God is doing tax evasion Police increasing jurisdiction overdue for extinction Hello fellow dummies, it is I, your captain of this fucked up shipwreck, Justin. Welcome back to Overdue for Extinction. If you survived our return, then Christ, you're just as warped as we are, and I'm all the happier for it. How about you, Anthony? Um, it's been a little rough lately, uh, I'm going to be honest. I think I'm alive in some form or capacity. I just kind of exist on a day-to-day -day basis, um, so I don't really know what's going on anymore in my life. Um, however, I, I found that warped humor, as you just pointed out, is um, a good coping tool for not really kind of uh, knowing how you're doing. Um, so I guess I'm going to kind of confess, not really a dumb moment that I had, but just kind of something that I thought was funny. So um, we recently had Pi Day. Actually, that was a week ago as of recording this episode. So by the time this releases, it will be like a month uh, after uh, Pi Day. But for those of Pi you who are on initiative. Pi Day was actually the recording of our first episode. Now you know. And yeah. Um, Pi Day is uh, P-I, not P-I-E. Although pizza places really, really uh, like to push deals about um, getting pizza for three fourteen, but usually comes at the cost of buying another pizza full price. Um, but in any case, uh, I am a customer of T-Mobile, and so every Tuesday they want to thank you for being a customer by giving you the shittiest deals possible. <laughs> and um, one such deal was they wanted to give us um, a Little Caesars large pizza for three fourteen, and I thought it's Little Caesars. Um, it's not. It's not great quality. I don't know how you feel about Little Caesars. Yeah, I, if you want, like, instant pizza, it's not too bad. Like, you just walk in, and you're like, boom, thanks, man. Especially if you get the pretzel crust with the cheddar or the nacho cheese on it, boom. Yeah, so, I mean, it's... <laughs> I always joke that their their um, their slogan is hot and it's hot and ready because that's all they can <laughs> promise you that it is it is warm and it's right. available to you right when you want it most of the time. Uh, they don't give any promises about quality because they know they can't deliver on nope. it. Um, but so, you know, I go in when I get little Caesars, it's usually out of like, well, I've got like six bucks in my name for the week. So I'll get little Caesars for lunch one day and it'll take care of me. Um, so I went in on pie day to get my $3 and 14 cent pizza, uh, which at this point, um, the whole pie day, um, offers just kind of feels like a real bad dad joke on crack. Um, but in any case, I went in not really expecting a lot, hoping to just kind of get a decent pizza. Sometimes it's real shit. Sometimes it's real dry. Sometimes it's not very good to eat. Um, so I went in and, um, the person who cut it couldn't be bothered to cut it all the way through. They cut it in the center of the pizza into slices, but they left the outer crust connected together, but not even just like the tip of the crust so that you could tear it apart. It was like half of the crust was still to perfectly uh, connected together. And so, being warped like I am, um, I looked at it and I just thought, man, I hope these people weren't emo in their younger days because it would explain why they're still around today. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's to feel the pain, man. You're, you're, you're cutting across the, the, the river of life, across the sidewalk to get to the other side, not up the river of life. You cut up the river of life, it's lights out, bro. Well, I don't. I guess to some people that was the goal, but uh, it, whether this person was intending to to end it all or not, they were definitely bad at cutting. So they're now they're making pizzas for a living. So ultimately, it sounds like they lost in life. Actually, I mean, but if you think of it, the people who are good at cutting are, and they're working in pizzerias, are serving you the best. Like everything's like in its individual sections. Like they're not giving you half-assed, you know, pizza. Now, I do say that working in a pizza restaurant myself, so obviously I've taken some dark turns that didn't turn out very well, but um, I make it the best of it. It is a, a secondary job, so it's not meant to be my, my permanent life goal. Man, I cannot slam on the restaurant industry. Uh, when I worked as a delivery boy, it was by far my favorite job. 
Uh, so props to uh, all you people out there uh, slinging pies. And in the restaurant business in general, because you deal with a lot of uh, a lot of the dumb that we cover. Right. Uh, th- there's a lot of reasons for which I will uh, most likely burn in the eternal abyss for. So I just wanted to make sure that I securely um, added to the list of reasons. So when I get there, there's no like, well, you were a good person, but you did some really questionable things and you laughed at some things you definitely shouldn't have. And I've got I've got something later uh, in the episode for one of our segments that um, when we were discussing and we'll get to it. But our um um, did you miss me segment, the misconnections, um, something came to mind when we were discussing that last one. And I thought, no, I'm definitely going to hell for the thought that just came to mind. So, you know, I, I, speaking of, uh, reserving your spot in hell, I, so I can clarify to get a little bit of a, a cooler spot in hell, maybe not like the hottest floor. Like I said, kids, when you're cutting, you want to go across the walk of life. You want to, you want to cut from side to side, left to right, right to left. It doesn't matter, and it'll be okay. I promise. But I mean, please, it's probably not okay. <laughs> but please do not cut up your arm. That is that is bad news. That is bad news. Bears all the way. Uh, I don't. So, I don't. So I don't cross. know that you should be giving instructions for where you and how you should cut. This sounds like this sounds like liable, problematic issues. I'm just saying, if you should choose. I think we've not, reiterated I, a few times that you're not supposed to listen to anything that we talk about or come up with. So no, I this is some prime example. <laughs> yeah, don't ever take us serious, please. No, just don't. And uh, as as has been running with uh, as a running joke, and uh, when Russ and I were doing the podcast, I, I seem to be constantly sick. So as you can probably hear in my voice, I am once again sick. <laughs> Um, I was talking with um, one of my coworkers' wives. I messaged her because we bought Girl Scout cookies off of them. And I said, hey, I just was curious. Other people got their Girl Scout cookies. I wondered if you guys got ours. And she's like, yeah, there was a little bit of a delay. We had um, we had uh, the troop scout got strep throat. And then like the entire troop got strep throat. And then we got strep throat. So there was like a few-week delay in getting the pickup. And I said, no, that's cool. I said, I understand. She's like, children just spread sickness like crazy. I said, yeah, they're really just kind of like the, the rats of the uh, bubonic plague. So, Oh, for sure. I mean, just children in general just spread everything everywhere. And they just they, they cough and sneeze into their hands and then stick it in your mouth. So they're great. I recommend having children if you don't already have a few. I don't recommend having children, and I have one. Avery, I love you if you're listening to this. I hope you're not, though. If you right. are, well, it's my yeah. fault. Now, I was like, granted, you have said Avery is a fairly fucked up child for the things that she has been exposed to. Um, but I don't know how she's going to find the podcast lest you sit her down and be like, listen to what daddy's doing now on the side job. Listen, she was already <laughs> excited to hear the trailers, so I let her listen to the trailer. The trailer was very mild, though. It included some bestiality. Um, and if you are interested in that video, you can go over to our Twitter at O4EPod, and uh, you can find that video. It's not too buried because I haven't posted on there in a minute. So, um, And that's on you. If you go watch it, that's on you. That not yeah, on you. Yeah, we didn't, say, we didn't say you should go watch it, so it's really on you if you do. But so. in any case, I think we should probably get down to the meat of things before we, we go too long here. Right. Uh, well, uh, before we get into uh, dive into our first section, I think you also had a, another update you wanted to give. Yes. Um, so, as you may have noticed, the first episode you've listened to had a, an intro skit and an outro skit. Um, it was something that Russ and I had adopted in the um, early days of uh, trying to figure out the format. And Justin and I have decided we like doing skits. Um, so we talked about it. We came up with this great skit idea where these two characters, Lucian and Caveman, um, accidentally discover time travel watches or, you know, whatever they are. They seem to be time travel watches. Um, and, uh, we, we liked the idea so much that we wanted to continue to do it, but then we thought maybe every episode doesn't have to have a skit to it. Maybe, um, we can spread them out or we can... Uh, do something else with them. So what we have decided to do, and we haven't worked out all the details yet, so we um, we still have some working to do on that. But what we've decided to do is we want to do a, 
um, maybe not necessarily Patreon specifically, but a Patreon ish um, subscription. I know the um, podcast uh, feed that we use for uh, releasing the episodes has a subscription option, but I don't know exactly how it works yet, other than how to set what episodes are bonus content and what um, what people can pay for each tier. So I, we got some more looking into that. But in any case, um, so what we're going to do is we gave you the first uh, skit for free, and uh, we would like to entice you that. If you'd like to follow those misadventures, we are going to continue to do them on a weekly basis until I think we've kind of run out of ideas is what the idea was. And uh, we're going to make them part of a Patreon. It's not going to be super expensive. Um, we talked about um, doing bonus content such as more Lucian and Caveman skits um, to continue the story. Uh, there's also going to be stuff like bloopers. Um, if we can get editor Karen to uh, uh, segment those, those things that come up. Um, and we're going to do things like uh, bonus content where we uh, maybe just do like a 10 minute um, exchange of you and I doing terrible, terrible dad jokes. Because I know we're both <laughs> very full of them um, and just kind of see who can make the other laugh the most. Um, so it's just going to be a bunch of dumb, essentially. Maybe we'll even start doing um, our own personal confessionals on there um, where we treat each other like priests without the uh, touching each other part. <laughs> that and uh you know i was thinking like maybe we could give uh give the folks a live episode of uh a look behind the camera and all the bullshit that goes on and uh bas- basically uh you know we we are a look behind the curtain we are paying to bring this to you we we're like hey we love this hobby so much let's spend a little bit of money on it and i, I know some of you have uh express some interest in some bonus content and we'd love to put it that in a place to where you can help us make the content that you want to see and maybe even give you the listeners uh, a little bit of uh, control on uh, what goes in there what you'd like to see so like anthony said as we get more details we'll release them to you and as always thank you for your support whether it's just listening now or uh, getting involved in the bonus content as we put it out we appreciate uh, all of it Yes, exactly. And um, like I said, we, we don't know yet what all the bonus content will include. Uh, I assume like the, the low um, tier will probably be a couple bucks, five bucks most. Um, but we are working with my wife, Kristen, as many of you have heard me mention several times. She does run a um, personalized craft uh, business uh, called Crafting to Escape. You can find her on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, just search in Crafting to Escape. Um, but she does, you know, Tumblr shirts, hoodies. Um, she's working on like bookmarks. Uh, uh, I think she's doing uh, pens. Um, she's looking to uh, kind of expanding into a lot of things. And now that we can 3D print stuff, maybe it's about that. Um, but if we do have higher tiers of the Patreon or, you know, whatever subscription service we do end up going with, um, there Only fans. will be. Let's not jump to let's not jump to extremes here. I I might be working two jobs to keep things floating, but I'm not sure that I'm ready for OnlyFans yet. If you but, want it, I'll give it to you, folks. Just let me know. Well, you have talked about providing other incentives. Uh, uh, so many listens, uh, getting a, a special Walmart shopping trip. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, there could be some interesting misadventures. Um. But um, we'll release we'll release those later, though. Right. So we are we are still working that out, and as we um, we get more details and start cementing things into a more solid plan, we will uh, keep you informed. But um, higher tiers may include not only access to all of that stuff. Maybe once a month you get you know at ten dollars you get something that uh, Kristen makes. Um, and she's got a, a, an Etsy shop, so you can check out stuff on there. Um, and then, you know, maybe if we go higher tiers, maybe you get like a, a personalized shirt every month. So, you know, you're supporting us, supporting hers. You get free shit out of it if you paid for it, I guess, with the merchandise. So, um, but yeah, so, so we're still talking about it. If you guys have any ideas, please, by all means, get a hold of us. I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to take another drink of water. All right. Well, I guess I'll take on over and saddle up, folks, because we have one hell of a show for you this week. Um,. So, for our first segment, you've been asking for its return, and I have landed some incredible stories, so we are going to put uh, not only my own personal dumb on display, but uh, we've got some listener-submitted content that I'd love to bring to you. Uh, 
in this segment. We are, are titling Drunken Lullabies, and it's your own personal stories, your own personal dumb. doesn't necessarily have to be uh, drunken stories, but as, uh, as it seems the trend, um, everybody has a drunken story. So you uh, you said that a couple of your friends have submitted some stories to us, and of course we are welcoming listener stories of all kinds. It doesn't have to be necessarily drunken, but uh, we went with um, your friends' uh, stories did involve uh, alcohol, um, so we are definitely going to segment um, this little bit of uh, material as drunken lullabies. Um, so I'm certainly glad other people are submitting stuff because we have had um, people like yourself, you submitted one, um, I think a couple of my cousins have submitted some stuff, so we we definitely want to hear um, your dumb stories, whether it was with alcohol or, or completely sober, as most of my my own things are. So uh, if you're ready to hop into it, let's go ahead and hear what your your friend has submitted as uh, our first drunken lullaby story. And uh, also, I'd like to note that we do have more of your listener content that uh, we are preparing to bring to you. So. Uh, like like you said, submit it, and we'll let you know when your episode drops so you can hear your own dumb. All right, this comes from my buddy Brock. Brock writes, I think I was 19 in college, and I had my first apartment that I shared with a few buddies. Not a single one of us was over 20. It was another weekend range, rager, nothing out of the usual. My buddies and I were trash. Half drunk cans and bottles littered the house. I'm sure there was a game of Pong or Kings going on. All of a sudden, one of my buddies, who was outside smoking, came running in in a panic. Cops! The cops are here! In in the heat of it all, someone grabbed a trash bag and started mass clearing bottles and cans into it. Within minutes, the entire apartment was picked up and cleaned for alcohol containers. In the mudroom, there was an attic hatch, and someone opened it and chucked the bag up in there to hide it. Turning all the lights, we hid. In baited silence, we started to hear a drip, drip, drip. As it turned into a steady stream, we all thought someone must have left the water on. A knock came at the door. The most sober of us, which was pretty still trashed, answered the door. It was the cops. Holding the breath, we heard the officer explain that there had been car break-ins in the area, and he wanted to make sure that everyone in the complex was aware. Relieved, we all cracked fresh beers and drank until we passed out. The next morning when I woke up, pantsless, brain fuzzy and barely remembering the night before i checked a place for what chaos had ensued uh somehow there was pudding all over the ceiling like a fuck ton of pudding my textbooks were in the freezer along with my pants no one took credit for any of that oh and that dripping noise that we heard yeah that was all the beer running out of the open bottles and cans from the bag in the attic from uh that we threw up in the mudroom that's that's i mean i was gonna say that's gonna cause a very big mess but i, I guess it already is because it already happened so um so i i don't know i know um in your next story you talk about um the last time you really drank so um we'll, we'll save it for that but it, me personally i can't drink like that anymore it's been a long time since i've been um like a hard partier and even i wasn't really a hard partier um, when I was younger, um, but I liked having parties where people were coming over and getting shit faced because it was always fun to kind of be like the sober one to stand in the corner and watch people. Which now that I say it out loud, kind of sounds creepy. Like I was, <laughs> uh, that's me um, in the corner. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, I almost said, um, uh, "Oh my god, what's the uh, fucking Bates Motel?" The character. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh my god. What the fuck is his name? People are going to hear it and be like, you fucking idiot. Um, the killer's name is Bates. Last name Bates. Can't help you. Uh, why? Norman Bates. Fucking Christ. Um, he's a, a, a fictional character, obviously. Um, but Norman Bates. Um, I, I feel like... I was going to say, I feel like Norman Bates uh, standing in their corner watching people get drunk. Um, but the the name Norman Bates didn't come to me. Instead, Jason Bateman did, and I love Jason <laughs> Bateman so much. So it was just like I knew that wasn't the right name, and now I'm picturing Jason Bateman standing in the corner of a room watching people get drunk like a fucking creep. For sure, you know, 
you know, I was always the opposite. Like if if I was like if you if I go out to a bar, I'm totally the guy that's like the quiet, mysterious one standing on a wall drinking somewhere where everybody else like interacts. But put me in a house party, and and I'm all over the place. So, right. um, so we have a friend of the show, Taya, uh, who did one episode with me and Russ. Um, or did she do? Well, she did her own bonus episode too, so yep. she's actually been technically on too. Um, and we'll have to get her on because when I ran the um, the donation drive for the sick kids. Um, she got a couple of uh, episodes, so we'll make her a guest a few times since we can get her um, situated with the recording schedule and all that. Um, but anyway, her and I have been friends for a long time, and she would often have um, um, help with cleaning up whenever everyone kind of passed out or left. And uh, so she was always very, very useful. Um, but there was a time kind of similar to Brock's situation, um, where my roommates from college really partied hard. Um, but I wasn't there the night that they did it. In fact, when I left the, the night before, they had nothing planned whatsoever. And then I came, um, back to the apartment from, uh, I stayed the night at my uh, girlfriend at the time's place. And, um, as I was getting to my, my dorm, uh, front door, the RA of our building came over, the resident advisor. And he was like, is so-and-so in there? Well, my roommates, I said, I don't know. I actually just got back myself. And I said, well, hold on. I'll let you in. And I opened the door and it was just a table of pong uh, set up on it. Uh, there was just shit cans laying everywhere, clothes laying everywhere. I missed a fucking rager apparently. Um, <laughs> and he just kind of looked around. And of course it's a dry campus. I don't know of a lot of campuses that allow partying unless you've got someone who's like, yeah, I'll turn a blind eye to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I said, I walked in and there was just, just alcohol cans littered everywhere. And I was like, I would like to reemphasize. I was not here last night. Like, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know where everyone is. Maybe everyone is dead for all I know. Uh, my roommates ended up not being there. So whatever they did at the end of the night, they, they left, they just left the mess there and went elsewhere. So, uh, he was like, well, make sure you clean it up. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'll definitely do that. No, I didn't. It's not my party. I'm not going to clean it up. For sure. I've never had that experience. I never went to college. Uh, my friends really never went to college. So all the parties we had were either house parties or field parties, you know, somewhere back in the sticks where no one was ever going to find you. Or honestly, you just light a fucking bonfire and sit around it and drink. So I've never had... I've never had that experience where, like, an RA or someone, like, uh, you know, maybe, like, a landlord or someone's coming around going, like, what the fuck are you doing? Clean the fuck up or shut the fuck up. It's been, it's just been, like, party on. Now, before I even got to a phase where I tried to have parties like that over my first apartment that I ever had, um, our landlord, I had, um, my brother was renting an apartment there with his girlfriend, I think, at the time, and I was renting an apartment at the same building. And um, we had had a little get together between uh, him and his girlfriend, and then one of her friends. I think they were trying to set me up with, and um, nothing ended up like happening between us. Even after, like, I think we flirted with each other, but not really important. But what is important was the landlord saw us leaving the four of us together, and apparently forgot that the girlfriend was on the lease and not just my brother. And he looked at us and he's like, did you do this? And we said, do what? And he's pointing at a hole in the drywall in the stairwell. He's like, someone put a hole in the wall. And I said, no, we <laughs> haven't done anything like that. So we were in our apartment the entire night and just, you know, hanging out or whatever. And he's like, well, I can't prove it wasn't you, but I also can't prove it was. He's like, just don't do anything like this. I'm not hosting a bunch of partiers. And then he looked at the two girls and he said, I'm also not hosting a brothel. So make sure you don't make this a regular habit. I'm like... First off, if I was going to pay for a lady of the night, I would do better than this. <laughs> like, give me some fucking credit here. The rent's not so expensive, I have to scrape the bottom of the barrel here. <laughs> like, you're not running the brothel, I'm running the brothel. Right, right. Let's get the facts straight here, buddy. Um, but in, in all the partying, I, I, partying I've done, I've never had anything like people throwing pudding on the wall or anything crazy like that. Um, so I hope Brock's friends weren't complete asshats and made him clean it by himself. Do you know if they pitched in and helped out or? You know, he he never mentioned it, uh, whether they helped clean up or not. Um, if you're going to trash I, someone's I, house, the least you could do is put it back together. Right. I think the fact that he found his pants and his books in the freezer the next morning says a lot about who was left 
there when he woke up. Probably not right. a lot. Not a lot of anybody. Now, now, I've also had the experience of someone putting my boxers in the freezer, but it wasn't like a drunk prank or anything. It wasn't during some crazy rager. It was just two people that I was hanging out with, and one of them decided to be an asshole and put all of my boxers in the freezer. And I think I had come home and was like, hey, uh, let me go shower real quick, and then we'll hang out. And so they're like, cool. And then I went and took my shower and came back, and I was like, did you guys take my boxers that I brought into the bathroom with me? Because I don't have them in here. And they're like, oh, no, we don't know where they are. And so I wrapped the towel around me. And I was like, well, where are my boxes? And I checked my drawer. And they went to my drawer. It's like, they're just literally gone. And they said, are you feeling hungry? Maybe you should check the freezer. I was like, really? So I went to the freezer. And all my boxes were in the freezer. I don't know how long. Cause they were nice and crisp. So I had to put one pair on because I wasn't going to free ball it. <laughs> but why not? I mean, I, I could have, I guess. At that point, it was two girls that could have been like, well, you've created a situation here, so someone's got to keep these things covered. And then we're <laughs> we're back to running a brothel. It was actually the same apartment, too, so. It's a, it's a common theme, it seems. It's just who I am. Apparently, I scream, uh, I pay for sex because I can't get it otherwise. I don't know. that oh. Maybe it's a ginger thing. Maybe that's a stereotype. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well, my next story that I brought to you, my entire D&D group um, was way too excited uh, to bring this to you, and I will get a hold of a video uh, when this, uh, the, the week this episode drops, and you will get to see an exclusive behind-the-scenes video of yours truly passed out, blacked out drunk. So um, you didn't tell me there was video of this next story, so now I'm, I'm super hyped to find that video. <laughs> Uh, I didn't know about it until after we recorded last Saturday when we went, when I went back down to do my D and D section, they're like, my DM was like, you're going to post that video. Right. And I'm like, do, do you guys have it? He's like, Oh, I have it. <laughs> so nobody takes video like that and then just misplaces it. It gets saved for a good occasion. And, for sure. And I guess here we have one for sure. All right, here we go. All right. It was our last session before christmas and i finally got my hands on the ttprg drunk quest only i got the six pack version and if you guys don't know what drunk quest is or the six pack version i highly if you like drinking and you like rpgs go check it out that's your free plug uh drunk quest it's only available for like short runs and then they pull it back uh anyway uh, so you randomly draw your hero out of a deck of cards, and they come with a special drink, which is their power-up move or their special feature. And you go around the table, and you draw from a monster deck. And it's in it's like D&D in the sense that you have an AC, and your weapon does an uh, X amount of damage. So you roll for your hero's damage, and the person sitting to the left of you rolls for your monster. Uh, if you beat the monster, you get the gold, the loot, or whatever they have on you. Plus, sometimes you get bonus bonus things that help you along uh, along the way. But if you die, you instantly have to chug a full beer on the spot. No questions asked. Uh, and Sorry, there, too rich for my blood. There are other conditions in the game that, like, say you take a hit while you're fighting the monster that causes you to take sips of your beer. Um, all in all... Um, all in all, there are six quests. Oh, also along the way, there's a coin that you can buy. There's a shop. So after every round, so after you go around, the, everyone fights a, a monster. Uh, so there were like five players. So you go around and fight five monsters. And once you go around once, uh, you bring out the, the shopkeeper card and everybody has a, a chance to buy items from the shop. One of them is a coin, which allows you to, Pass it along, and it's supposed to be once per per quest, and there's six quests. And it allows you to make someone instantly chug a beer, no matter what. Well, we just were like, fuck the rules, we're not drunk enough. Let's hand this coin out every turn. They're I feel 20... like, I feel like saying we're not drunk enough is always a, a slippery slope to a bad situation. Oh god. Uh so so there are six so there are six quests in total for a chance to, to chug about 20, 20 beers. So there's 20, 20, about 20 monsters, five big bosses, and then one final 
one final boss. Uh, and of course, along the way, it's, it, it, the whole game is designed for you to die. Any, everything you do forces you to die. So it, it's, it's really just an excuse to drink while rolling dice. It really is. So it's like having a DM who's hellbent on making the party pay just to exist. Right. So personally, I thought we were kicking off things a little bit too slow. So I started chugging beers with other people as they were dying. I'm like, I feel bad for you. You died twice in a row and I haven't died yet. Let me drink a beer with you. Uh, mind you, I started off drinking like from this giant bottle of pre-mixed margarita. I didn't start oh off with beer. I started off with like... 10 or 12 percent pre-mixed marks and the first three people to, to die we forced them to chug a long island iced tea which had seven <laughs> shots in it so so i was one of the ones of course who unfortunately got one of the long islands after i had um chugged half a bottle of margarita um so we started we started around 10 a.m and by 2 p.m., I'm almost completely blacked out. Um, at some point in time, um, my buddy Raber and I blasted Tenacious D, uh, Fuck Her Gently. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with that song. Um, but at the top of our lungs, uh, you just hear us screaming, You gotta fuck her hard! In our best, best, best singing voices. Good luck mixing well. that to a normal level, Karen. Don't. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, everybody's so just... Oh, my God. At this point, everybody's, like, crying because they're laughing. No one, no one can breathe. Um, Aaron's wife ends up ch chugging, uh, chugging one of the Long Islands are probably, like... The guy who le drinks the least in our group also ended up one with one in Long Island, so he ended up like rocking back and forth in his chair. Thomas did just like laughing at absolute like we have no fucking clue. He doesn't remember what was going on in his head. He's just laughing and rocking back and forth. Um, so like I said, about two p.m. four hours into this game, I I don't I don't remember much, but I do remember is uh, standing outside in my driveway against my buddy Raber's truck to, to puke and rally, and I'm just swaying back and forth. I don't remember throwing up. They told me I threw up. I just remember swaying back and forth, and I hear someone from the kitchen window, which, like, looks out on the driveway going, you all right, buddy? And I just throw a thumbs up in the air because I heard something. I didn't know what they said, and then all I hear is, like, he said he's all right! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> to which someone would come bring me another beer while I was standing around the truck. At least I remember one beer uh, around the truck. Um, so that's it. That's all I remember. That That's it. I come back inside. Uh, I come back inside. I remember a lot of people smashing pizza, still trying to play the game. No one knows what the fuck's going on. And then all of a sudden, it's 9 p.m. And this is where the video comes in. Somewhere in between 2 p.m. and 9 p.m., they record a video of me um, sleeping. So I wake up on the couch covered in an empty house. My friends were, were gracious enough to drag my drunk ass over to the couch and cover me up with a blanket. Um... Instead of just let me fall face first into the table and drawing dicks all over my face. I'm glad you guys didn't do that. Uh, spot on for you. On top of that, uh, my my brother, my, my chosen family, my brother lives next door. They called him to be like, hey, because I have sleep apnea. <laughs> They're like, JT's drunk in his house and we're not sure if he's breathing or not. You might want to check up on him every once in a while. So apparently my nieces were running in and out of the house about twice an hour, uh, checking to make sure that I was still breathing. Um, but like I said, that was around Christmas time and no one, no one has really drank since then. Like we've tried, like we'll crack a few beers. Like that used to be our thing. We drink and play D and D, but we never got like sloppy drunk. You know, we just got, uh, we just got, you know, 
a little lubed up. Now no one's like everyone's afraid to touch alcohol now. They're like, oh please, do we have to drink while we play? Right. Yeah. I so imagine it's, it's not really um, welcome uh, drink anymore. No, so so that's a that's a story out of my own personal archive, and like I said, I'll get the video uh, released whenever we release the the episode. But so yeah, so you may have not partied recently, but my last blackout was just a, just a few months ago. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I'm trying not to lose my voice completely here. Um, so do you do you personally own Drunk Quest? Is that your game? Yes, okay. it is my game. So you still have it then. Yes. Okay. So I've seen this game advertised on Facebook um, every once in a while. Um, and I thought it sounded fun. I, I read, like, roughly what the game was about. And even though I'm not a big drinker, I do like D&D. And I think it can be quite fun to drink while playing D&D. And this sounds like it's this perfect combination of the two. Um, I think if you would play the game correctly, you know, and, you know, maybe just drink a... You don't have to do all six quests. It's meant to play one quest at a time. We just took on all six. So if you would just play the one quest, you might have like four or five beers tops. So clearly it was a bad... You guys went extreme on the rules. Yeah, we went we went hardcore. Yeah. So I wanted to buy it because I thought it sounded fun. But the problem is, is I don't see a lot of my friends a lot of the time. And that was before... Um, working the two jobs now it's impossible to see anyone and it's like if you want to hang out with me it's like I have Monday and Tuesday night available after like 4 o'clock and then it's inconvenient to get together on a weekend or a weekday unless you're going out for like um, wings or something you know something that's a special Tuesday day Mm. Um, or you can catch me Saturday and Sunday but before like 2.30pm when I have to go to my other job so there's no real no chance to hang out with anyone which sucks but Um, what I have found over being an adult, um, and having friends who are other adults who have busy lives going on, as you know, someone who plays D and D, it is damn near impossible to get people together to play a game that everybody really loves, even though like there's no cost to it. It's just, it's just hard to get everyone together. Um, so I've always kind of joked that friendship is saying that you'll get together for six months and then, uh, nothing ever gets done. No one gets together in person. Um, speaking of, we should get together sometime soon. Yeah, we should. But I, I even thought for maybe some bonus content, maybe we could play, uh, maybe we could live stream us playing Drunken Quest for the people. Uh, we don't have to go so extreme, but uh, we could play a round or two, and uh, that could be fun. That, that is an option. Um, when Russ and I discussed that we were going to celebrate getting the 50th episode by um, doing a drunk episode, we were going to continue to drink. Maybe it was going to be a longer episode because it was going to take some time to get drunk, obviously. Um, but you had indicated um, that trying to get you drunk, what was the terminology? You something about the constitution of a buffalo or something? <laughs> um, maybe, or Minotaur. Probably a Minotaur. minotaur. Probably Minotaur. Uh, probably but, Minotaur because I, I, I played... Uh, in one of my campaigns, I played a Minotaur Paladin who had a drinking problem. And I would sit down, and any time my character was drinking, I was drinking. And let me tell you, if you're trying to keep up with your Minotaur character as a human being, good fucking luck. It ended up in some, like, really deep emotional uh, around-the-table scenes that, like, get talked about still today. So, um... So it, maybe we'll do that. Um, you you may need to pregame a little bit so that we match because I don't drink a lot. I drink wine. I drink beer occasionally. I may have like two um, max at a time. So you may have to pregame ahead of me. Um, we're not I'm doing all... Kraken though because Kraken's what brought out whipped cream uh, nipple Batman. So yeah, I'll just let you know. I in general I don't do any um, non clear uh, liquors. So oh, okay, yeah. I I usually try to stay like the 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 Long Islands, like when they're mixed like that. Yeah, but usually I'm like a gin or vodka, uh, tequila, that type of thing. So well, spe- speaking of day drinking, I think I think 10 a.m. seems to be a bit excessive to start playing this game. Like even if it's the weekend, and you've got nothing else going on. Like 10 a.m. seems a little bit early to start drinking that heavily. Well, you mentioned that like you know. Two two beers and you're kind of like maybe getting a little loose. It for record I'm on like beer number three as we're recording right now, so a uh, little look behind the curtain there. Um, I don't have a problem, I promise. Uh, you can quit at any time. You just choose not to. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah. You also mentioned it being hard to get together as adults. And I've been really lucky that my D and D crew is super dedicated. They play every other weekend and this weekend alone, we paid, played like 12 or 13 hours straight. Right. And that's pretty, that's pretty typical for us. That, that's another insane commitment that you do. Like, like I said, the group that I started with, um, when I first learned how to play D&D, they wanted to do eight hours, I think, once a week. It was like a Saturday or whatever, and I was cool with that, but it was still kind of excessive. So I like I would order Little Caesars because at that point I was like 25, so I didn't start having you know, all the um, heartburn and everything else that comes with something cheap and shitty like Little Caesars. Um, and then I would eat on that pizza throughout the day and it'd be good. And then they wanted to go to every weekend, eight hours on Saturday, eight hours on Sunday. And I was like, I, I can't commit to that. And you're like, yeah, we're going to start D and D soon. And then I don't hear from you very much until the end of the day. And it's like nine o'clock of your night. And like, we just wrapped up a 12 and a half hour session. Like what the fuck are you guys doing for 12 and a half hours? Dude, we honest to God drop about like a hundred dollars every other week on food. Uh, I think, like, I bought donuts just for the morning for breakfast, like, from uh, Doco. So that was 30 bucks. Our pizza tab is consistently, like, 60 to 70 bucks. Plus, people are bringing in snacks and chips and drinks and beer and everything else. It's a whole shindig. So, so 10 a.m., back to that again with your, your non-drinking problem. Um, <laughs> so 10 a.m. is a bit extreme. Like, if, if I can get away with sleeping till 10 a.m., uh, I'm a very lucky person because now with three kids, it doesn't happen. But like when I get up at 10 a.m. on a weekend, I slither out of bed and I pull myself down to the couch in the living room and then I lay down on the couch again and I kind of continue to desire the sweet long sleep of death. Um, but like you can't you can't start drinking that hard at 10 a.m. The only time that I think it's acceptable to drink hard at 10 a.m. is if you're taking communion at church and you get a little bit tipsy on the walk. <laughs> That's probably even even at 10 a.m. The Irish are like, you know, I was going to do a try to do an accent here just now. And then I got choked up. I'm like, maybe my voice isn't going to let me do it. I, I'll give it a shot because, you know, this is for entertainment for being dumb. <clears throat> I, I would think that the Irish would be like, you got this out. Slow. I can't even fucking do it. I can't do it. They're going to tell you to fucking slow down, though, because the ancestors are feeling the poison from your, your <laughs> drink at 10 a.m. They're going to tell you to shove a potato up your ass or something. I don't know. I'm not Irish enough to do an accent properly, and I'm shaming a lot of people right now for that. I, I think that I was probably more European and attended brothels or something. I wasn't in the potato fields or anything. Um, but what voice I can do fine, and maybe not now that I'm dying either, is whipped cream Batman. So, you know. Can you do whipped cream Batman? I could possibly try to do whipped cream Batman. I don't know that my voice is going to appreciate it. It may fuck the rest of this episode if I do do it. But... Um, I, I think that's the problem too. Is like if we get together and play uh, drunk quests, or, or get you know, me with your your group of friends who drink and play these um, games and such together, it's going to become problematic because everyone, you know, I'm going to be the new guy to the group. I don't think I know any of your friends. I know Micah because we went to church camp when we were younger together. And he bailed on us. If you're listening, Micah, you bailed. We want you back around D and D. Get back to D and D, Micah. For, forsake drink. your life commitments. But in any case, if, if the alcohol starts flowing and you guys get brave again and start drinking, like everyone's going to be having a good time and feeling the buzz. And then I'm just going to start punching people in the face when I, when I get too far blacked out. And I'm just going to be like, tell me where they are. And the people are going to be like, what do you mean, man? And I'm going to be like, they're drugs. Tell me where they're going. And then I'm going to shake people down for answers and be like, swear to me. So, you know. <laughs> It's, it's fine. People are going to have a good time until Whipped Cream Batman comes out. And if you're not familiar, if you're a newer listener, I won't go into the whole story, but I refuse to let people party foul and leave alcohol undrank. So I finished everyone's uh, cup of Kraken and then I got blackout drunk. I uh, found a can of uh, whipped cream in, uh, in my friend's refrigerator and I went into the, one of his uh, bedroom closets, took my shirt off, sprayed it on my nipples and then came out. And uh, I don't remember what it was. Oh, I think I came out and saying, I am Batman. I'm the world's greatest detective. And so obviously I'm not a good Batman because I just revealed my identity to everyone. So I've already fucked up the first rule of vigilanteism. But uh, yeah, so I don't, I haven't drank Kraken since then. I'm almost afraid to. It kind of brings out a dark side of me. 
You could say it brings out the Dark Knight. <laughs> it could bring out the Dark Knight, indeed. Um, so I, I, I would like to game with you guys sometime if you get brave again. Maybe play some Drunk Quest, if not something else. Uh, just you know, make sure there's no whipped cream on hand because obviously it's gonna uh, it's gonna trigger something in me. Um, I, I guess the whipped cream maybe was like a an identity concealing, you know, kind of like Clark Kent's <laughs> glasses. Uh, right, right, no one right. no one knows it's me when I've got whipped cream on my nipples. No, I, like I said, I guess I've just confessed my secret identity, so I guess they do now. So uh, the fun thing is, is my group doesn't have to get brave. There are there are rules in Drunk Quest for drinking water. If you drink water, uh, the first like every time you get up to take a piss, you lose a thousand gold. And trust me, if you can get a thousand gold in that game, you're you're doing you're doing good. So there there are water rules, but you get penalized heavily. You'll never win ever. We'll, we'll see how it goes then. I guess I, I'm I'm for sure a game, but I'm gonna have to call off on one or two of my jobs to to be able to play and not uh, die when I go back in. Um, so yeah, it, it, that's uh, that's all I've got. I think on uh, touching on that story, it sounds like a good time. It also sounds like a bad time. Yeah, it was excellent. It was wonderful. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I lost several hours of my life, so I didn't have to take a toaster bath. Alcohol just shut me down. <laughs> your body will tell you when you've had enough you just may not be ready for it too yep so all yeah. right anything else you want to touch on before we move on to our next segment no i think i'm good man okay uh i see you've gained or not really gained but you have um procured for us um a segment that we and russ have tried but didn't have a whole lot of luck with um and then i think we we did do one with my cousin that was um i thought turned out decent so we're gonna give it a shot uh you've procured for us an unlicensed therapy segment yes i have several submissions um you guys are wonderful uh shout out to all my friends who are just chomping at the bit to provide us with content and stories of their lives, your lives, uh, full well know that we are going to give you the just worst fucking advice possible. And when did it all start for you? Probably when I was a kid. You see, my mother... Have you tried removing one of your fingers to see if that would relieve the tension? R remove my... Are you even a licensed therapist? Yeah, so for those who are uninitiated, uh, the premise behind unlicensed therapy was we are not by any means a uh, psychiatrist. Um, I did study psychology for a year, so I guess that counts for something. But I wouldn't go around telling people that I know how they should live their lives because I was a psych major at one point. Um, so when you send in a problem that you're, you're having, such as uh, your friend who's choosing to go by chief, um, if you don't want your name given when you submit content, you know, by no means you have to give your name. Give us a nickname or we'll just leave you nameless and assign you a random one when we come up with it. Um, but uh, uh, when going through Chief's story here, it's a very real problem. And uh, when I was reading it, I was like, man, this one's tough to make funny when it comes to figuring out advice for, for Chief. And then I sat and thought about it for a while. And I was like, I think I got something. So um, I'll, I'll stop uh, uh, meandering and I'll let you go ahead and uh, jump us into unlicensed therapy. All right. Uh, Chief has titled the story, Pick Up Your Shit and Leave. And like we uh, noted before, Chief would like to run it, run it, cut that one out or leave it in. I don't give a fuck. We're three beers in. What does it matter? Um, this person refers to go by the name Chief, and I don't know that we ever reference Chief again, <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, he says, um, unfortunately, I'm the product of two incredibly self-involved and narcissistic parents. After decades of being submitted to their constant barrage of mental and emotional abuse, I was able to break contact with them. I was only able to do this with the strength of my wife and daughters. That was about two years ago, and it has been... Two of the most peaceful years of my life. It's important to note that my, my abusers live only two blocks away. Recently, my, wi uh, my wife and one of my daughters got a job at a local shop. After what we can only assume noticing our car parked out in front of the shop, this self-involved one started shopping, stopping in 
every time they work. My daughter informed her boss and was able to hide in the back and not interact with these dickholes. My wife, on the other hand, taking it upon herself, has taken the brunt of the interaction. My wife also has a parking pass in her car for the doctor's office she works for her day job. Out of nowhere, my parents started booking their current and future appointments at her office. To which she, my wife, informed her boss of the situation and has been able to avoid contact with them. Although her, co- although her co-workers have commented on how they're the most narcissistic people she has ever met. On top of stalking my family at their places of employment, my birth giver has started taking daily walks at the same time past her house. Sometimes multiple times a day, always looking for someone outside to interact with and worm her way back in. Finally, last week, at the exact same time she would be walking by, there was a knock at the door. My wife answering it pokes her head out to see who was there. Birth giver magically had forgotten her doggy poop bags and wanted to know if we had a bag she could use. After After handing her the bag through the door, my wife shut it in her face with no other interactions. Help. What should I do to prevent my self-obsessed parents' parental units from stalking us and harassing us go for it so before we get further than this um i would like to point out that i think it's a general conception uh or perception rather not a conception um that is a whole nother matter which i know entirely about as i have three children um but a general perception that if someone has glasses they are perceived as smarter than people who don't have glasses so um you yourself have glasses of course they are necessary for probably being able to see more than five feet in front of you absolutely Um, I feel like if I'm going to give life-changing advice, I also need to get some glasses. So, I've I've done some oh. nice, nice short yeah. glasses here. I um, ins- you feel you f- uh, I feel like you, your intelligence and your wisdom mods got a got a boost there. Yeah, yeah, my my IQ sure, surely went up at least five points. Um, there's a bit of a glare from the screen, which I'm not I'm not loving. So let's see if we can. Nope, it's not going to fix that. They are well, blue that's light just, glasses. So. That's just the for folks who don't have a visual here. Uh, the, his screens are reflecting off the lenses of his glasses, and what I think it is is his brain's just downloading all that knowledge off the interwebs. Uh, that is the the bonus right. that these that these glasses give. They're pretty powerful. I was thinking more like along anime lines where you know their glasses go white and you can't see their eyes any longer. I think that's just what's happening. I'm having an anime moment. Oh sure, we can go for that too. <laughs> okay, so so now that we're gonna provide professional advice here, um, I, I actually have two different suggestions. Um, I hope one of them proved to be helpful for you, Chief. So I assume he will be listening um, and will ah. provide feedback about if he's followed either one of my advices. Um, Absolutely. So. So first piece of advice here, uh, Chief, I have to ask, how do you feel about adoption? It is a wonderful process, uh, a very tedious and long process, a lot of painful um, steps along the way. But, you know, there are a lot of children who need um, adopted, who need homes, who need loving families, and there's just not enough people to provide that. Now, you could provide that and also get something out of them. And I don't mean children labor, though if Minecraft has taught us anything, it's that the children yearn for the mines. So I think maybe ending <laughs> child labor laws may have been a mistake. Um, but, but in any case, so lots and lots of kids to adopt, no shortage of children of, of varying races. Um, I don't know what race chief is. Not really important. There's plenty of other races to choose from. But what is important, chief, is that you take one of these kids. I mean, you adopt one of the kids. You don't take them. That's that's a whole other problem. That's going to cause you other issues you don't need right now. You adopt a child legally. You're going to need to make sure you follow that step properly. Now, you're going to take a bunch of these children in. You're going to adopt as many. You're going to be Angelina Jolie. I hope you have the financial stability and the um, the mental capacity for loving all of these children because they're about to become very crucial to this plot. So you take in all these children. Um, you start an orphanage, right? And you make a different child answer the door each time the parental units stop by for a, a reason that they have to talk to you when you've been trying to avoid them. Um, so you make a different kid answer the door every time. Now, this is going to be involved planning because you do also have to stop showing up around town. I, I feel like they know where you work, where you go to shop and all that. They're probably stalking you when they see your vehicle. They kind of follow you. So you're going to have to stop going out, become a recluse entirely. It's a great life. I do it. I highly recommend it. <clears throat> that being said, 
Uh, so you're going to stop showing up around town so they can't see you. And every time they come to the door, you want that house to be as chaotic as the McAllister house in Home Alone. So much so that you're going to make it impossible to decipher if there is an adult at home at any point in time, let alone be able to figure out what the race of the family consists of because there's going to be an Asian kid showing up the one day, you're going to have a Mexican the next day, and go for a black kid, you know, Whatever floats your boat, as many of those little bastards as you can get. Uh, that's the first piece of advice. Do you, do you have anything that, that you like about that plan that you want to touch on? Uh, that's probably a poor choice of words since we're talking about kids here, but go on. I actually, I love that piece of advice. Uh, it's going to be incredibly confusing, especially for uh, someone who pegs himself as incredibly narcissistic and all-knowing. Uh, just the idea that someone different is answering the door is going to fuck with them. Um, yeah, they'll be real confused and assume that it's probably one of your kids. Because um, I think I think you mentioned he had a couple of uh, daughters. Yes, yes, he had a few daughters. And well, you know what? Also, and it actually does throw throw off because uh, um, I myself have like been sitting around the fire before at nighttime as she's helped herself down through the yard, not knowing anybody was sitting there. And so out of out of the the abyss, I just address her. Um, and it throws her off a lot when she thinks she's sneaking around the house trying to look into a window. And you're just like, <laughs> hey, bitch, what's going on? Uh, but I'm really glad you uh, you name dropped on the Callisters because that was going to be one of my suggestions um, to booby trap the outside of the house in the yard as much as possible. Um, I, I think personally I would get all of the neighbors to walk their dogs in the yard. Um, because the, the front yard uh, of his property isn't really usable for anything anyway. It's just out by the sidewalk. It's not, you know, there's not really room to do anything before you hit the road. I say you get all the neighbor's dogs to shit in this one area. And maybe even on the sidewalk, because we don't use the sidewalk. He doesn't use the sidewalk. His mom's the only one who uses the sidewalk. There's another so idea just, for sure. You could just completely decimate the scent of the air around your house with dog shit and then... <laughs> She'll yeah. either have to very carefully step around it or step through it, you know, whatever. But then, like, booby trap the steps up to the house. So, like, Wait. she's going to get some... Go ahead. So so we have, like, the obvious home alone traps that there's a... Good if you want to do some damage. If you're looking for maybe more mental damage than uh, the physical, like, paint can to the face, um, you could go down... Well, probably not now because they're not anywhere to be found, but... Um, Halloween stores, right? Go get the ones that if you step on the pressure pad or whatever, it jumps up at you, like the spiders and shit. Right. You need some of those, some of the screaming banshees. Just really horrify your house. You know, I think we could we could take that um, the idea of the, the pressure pads with things jumping out at you, except you have pre-recordings of you telling your your parents horrible things. So, like, like you step on one and it's like, you're the worst mom ever, or why did you even bother birthing me or one relevant to this story i bet you you love my dead brother more so you're just really really nailing that emotional damage and just sending it sending it right back so it booby trapping is an option uh you could do that in additional to becoming angelina jolie if you really want to so So. um there's there's a lot of steps you could take you could really juice it up for creativity and make your own idea for sure well i'm really interested to hearing what your second option is Okay, so the second option kind of goes along with um, uh, the idea of, of the horror theme, and and I have to I have to clean my glasses and talk about my professional opinion. Um, so anyway, my second idea uh, is a little bit more chaotic. Um, if you find that becoming Angelina Jolie is a bit more extreme than you're willing to take on, I have maybe less drastic actions that can be taken. Um, so as an alternative, I recommend something far less committed, like. Um, Inviting a spirit through a Ouija board. Um, I personally, I, I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not I believe in spirits and ghosts. I, I don't know. Someone who grew up in, in the Christian church and we've had experience with demons are real and they're out to get you. I think, like, I think a lot of the demon activity in biblical times were mental disorders that they just obviously didn't have any way to attribute properly. Um, but in any case, so you're going to get a Ouija board. They're, they're great fun, great for sleepovers, great for scarring your children for the rest of their lives. Um, you're going to give the spirit a nice place to stay. In exchange, you can train them to be your personal haunting pets and sick them on people. Now, I am absolutely not a professional with experiencing or dealing with paranormal 
accidental or otherwise. I'm 100% certain though that you can train him like a dog. I feel like that's that's accurate. Um, now, I feel like in addition to giving you my personal guarantee that you can absolutely train a spirit to do as you wish, I'm also 100% sure that there's no possible way that inviting a spirit into your home will have any negative consequences whatsoever or come back to, uh, well, to haunt you, uh, for lack of a, a better phrase. I find it really interesting that this is the route you went, knowing that you know nothing about Chief, nothing about his family, um, or something that you and I haven't even covered yet uh, since coming back into contact, contact, and that is what our actual personal beliefs are. And um, myself, a practicing Norse pagan, uh, separated from the fucking white power movement that likes to use Norse symbols, let's get that straight, and uh, he is of Native American and Slavic uh, background or heritage so the idea of calling upon one's ancestors or the idea of um speaking or feeding a spirit to protect your 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 house or property is actually like something that would already be in play um based upon his practicing religious beliefs so we could just amplify that and be just uh, according according to his practicing beliefs leave out a little extra food uh, in the yard for f- for the spirits to uh, maybe uh, you know give mom a, a little chase to turn her walking into to jogging until she you know fucks right off. You're gonna want to light a fire under that ass and, and make it clear that Absol- uh, they are unwelcome there. Absolutely, and and there's always the alternative that I could just you know dress up in a reaper costume and just come out of you know the side of the house and just walk behind her and not say anything or i prefer blasting the final countdown as i walk at her with my side swinging yeah, this is also an option as well um i think if you can get dead nana on your side uh bring her back from the grave and uh especially if, if it's the maternal uh grandmother um and you make her berate her i think that'll that'll go a long oh. way too oh yeah get her own mom to uh tell her she's a piece of shit that I, I like what, because her mom apparently was also a narcissist. So, you know, you're just really uh, digging at those childhood traumas that are buried somewhere deep in a birth giver. Yeah, that's, that's what we do here in Unlicensed Therapy. We really dig into the trauma without actually providing you a way to do anything with it that's healthy in any way. So, you know, we're doing our job here. For sure. All right. Uh, if uh, Do you have anything else you'd like to cover? No, I think I'm I'm ready to uh, to remove the glasses. They're they're too much power. I think the next time I need to really up my game too, and I'm gonna get a little clip on bow tie. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go all out for the next uh, unlicensed therapy. So right. I hope we I hope we were able to help you, Chief. And uh, if not, I mean you came to us knowing damn well what this podcast is gonna be. So that's that's kind of on you at this point. Also, Chief, you you know me. I've already given you plenty of advice that uh equally matches what we covered here <laughs> so uh anytime you want any more of your life trauma turned into uh from a tragedy into a comedy uh we'll gladly help you out there so i'm going to remove the the power move the glasses here and now all of a sudden i feel like um doing uh bong rips out of my ass or something <laughs> So now that we've gotten the professional um, opinions out of the way, um, hopefully he'll go seek a second opinion because honestly, if you get therapist um, advice like that, you should probably stop seeing that therapist and report them to the board. <laughs> um, but um, but we'll move on to our, our next uh, segment, close to our last one. We're going to wrap up here. And obviously, we're going to see the worst of humanity before we get out completely. Um, but uh, we like doing the misconnection segment so much last week, uh, last episode, that I, I was happy to see you brought me another one. And, um, well, I don't think people are using Craigslist for what it's supposed to be for. It was supposed to be love, and this, this guy is... Um, it's not love. It might be another L word, but it's not love. Um, so if you're ready to go ahead and present to us what um, what you found, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and find out uh, if this guy falls under our new segment. Did you miss me? You don't understand. I just have to find her. You should try a misconnections post. That's a great idea. To whom it may concern. Oh, buddy, you're gonna die alone. 
So the uh, title of the uh, misconnection uh, that you have brought to us was, you saw me on the balcony of our hotel, male searching for woman, age 25, Orlando, Florida, as you pointed out. Um, so this guy goes on to say, well, this is very awkward, but I figured I would post it anyways in hopes that you see this because I am sure we are not from the same state or city. Anyways, I had an extra half hour in my hotel room to myself, and I was extremely horny and kind of feeling adventurous. So I decided to go out onto the hotel balcony and rub one out, in hopes that a woman would see, but pretty sure nobody would. Well, you did see, and I decided not to stop. Uh, okay, so first off, um, we, I, can't, I can't read it all without stopping. So when you are horny and adventurous, that is when it is the most crucial to immediately rub one out because nothing is ever going to lead to a good place from that point. I mean, he could have just, like, went about his day and perhaps, like, went to a bar and found someone to bring back to the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, as a, as a guy, and I, I don't know, I'm sure there are women who are like this, but as a, a general overall consensus, it sounds like women um, aren't as like, horny and are, like, as devious about being horny as men are. Um, and I know that that's not entirely true because I have been with a few girls who have just been like, let's do it every night. And I'm like, no, please leave me alone. I don't want to anymore. <laughs> um, but, um, but, but men tend to think that the world wants to see their dick. And I don't, I don't understand why. Like I, I have been fine sending dick pics to girls knowing that they wanted the dick pic. I've never been like, well, this is going to brighten her day. And it's just this wrinkly, <laughs> sad old man picture. <laughs> right. You're, you're like, there's no way this is bringing anyone any any pleasure to look at this. Right. I have never sent a dick pic thinking this is going to get her in the mood. It's just been like, oh, she sent me titties. She might want a dick pic back. Uh, and I think even in that situation, a lot of time, they're just like, no, please don't. We don't have to reciprocate. Like, here's my tits. You enjoy them. Like, <laughs> right, go about your right. day. <laughs> well, rather, give me, give me like a, a half graphic novel on what you would like <laughs> about my tits. But please don't send that dick pic. Yeah, pl please don't send the sad old man in the raincoat. <laughs> like, we don't need it. Uh, but anyway, anyway. Um, uh, so I think like if you get to that point where you're like, yeah, I'm horny and adventurous, this is like, maybe I should just jerk off. And then you get that post not clarity. And you're like, man, that would have been crazy if I went out on the balcony and jerked off, huh? But uh, this guy, he didn't get to that point. So, um, So he goes on to say, well, you did see, and I decided not to stop. I would have shown everything. If he's jerking off, it seems like he, unless he was like planning on bending over and spreading his ass cheeks, maybe that's, that's a whole other problematic thing. Like, well, maybe he was like standing behind something. So like, it looks like he's jerking off, but you're not quite, you know, you, you know, you could be doing something else. What that something else is. I don't, I don't know, but. You that's know. just that's true. Maybe he was jerking off, and it was like uh, uh, more of a suggestion that it was happening, and not necessarily the full thing. I kind of went a little bit on the extreme side with that, and I was like, "What if he's like grabbing his ball bag and like stretching it out and flapping it like a bat's wings?" It's just like, "How do you like this? Is this doing it for you?" <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say, maybe, maybe it was just like just the tip of his dick is hot, like poking out from behind something, you know. So there's there's never been a bigger lie coming from a man than I swear it'll be just a tip. Never a bigger lie. God damn. And as someone who has been a, pro a proclaimer of said lie, I can I can say that full on confidently. Anyway, back to this this jerk off. Um, uh, where is he? Uh, oh, I would have shown everything, but it looked like you pulled out your camera phone and I did not want to be on your camera phone. So I finished quickly. And that was that. I went back out onto the balcony after I had finished and you shouted something to me. Let me know what hotel we stayed at and what you shouted at me. I would love to chat. I'm sure it's m much more than that. But, um, so that's his, uh, this is misconnection. And of course, because the internet is the world that it is, we'll never know if he found true love or not. No, I, I'm, I'm hoping that in some perfect world, these two are, these two are met, meant for each other. Like she finds the post and they're just out in random public places, masturbating together. God, damn it. Um, maybe even masturbating each other. which should probably be a little less creepy, but it's still public indecency at the very least. <laughs> hey, I am just wishing a healthy sexual relationship between the two of them. 
Well, in any case, um, so when I when I first read this, I, I there was a lot to unpack here. Maybe not necessarily from his pants. He might have been a small dick man. Um, but it's but interesting he had, that he, he, he clearly had big dick energy if he's out there it, on the balcony it, vapping. It, Sure did. He sure did. Um, I thought it was interesting that he didn't want to be on camera because it seems almost defeatist of the purpose um, of wanting to be watched, right? Like you're, you're out there jerking off so somebody will see you and then someone pulls out a camera phone and you're like, ah, let's not watch me jerk off now. Um, right. Well, maybe she was recording him because she wanted to use that for herself <laughs> later and not that she was like, there's this creep on the balcony next to me jerking off. I should probably tell the cops. Here's my evidence. Right, and I guess maybe maybe the defensive argument for not wanting to be on camera was um, he's giving away potentially income earning material at that point. He could have. I mean, OnlyFans wasn't around. This post I think was made in 2013, if I remember correctly. Um, but uh, you know, OnlyFans wasn't the thing, so um, he's not he's not uh, able to mark. I guess he could have been on Pornhub. That's probably been around since the dawn of the internet. Um, but it's always the ugly guys no one wants to ever see naked. They're the ones that feel like they need to be seen jerking off. And, uh, you know, we, we don't often see that being the problem with women. With women, it's just like, oh, I want to expose myself today. You know, here's my tits. And then everyone's like, yeah, tits. And it's like celebrated. But, you know, men do it because they think that their dick belongs in everything and are God's gift to women. And it's, I would compare it maybe more to like, a rat in your house like you didn't invite the rat in you didn't expect to come across a rat and you can't wish hard enough that it would just go away but my thought was when when he said that she yelled something to him like i'm thinking like it was probably a threat to call the police and the phone was not out because of the camera it was out because she was getting ready to call him i never actually like in my work brain it wasn't her going like i'm calling the cops now and she's yelling at him it was like it was more like she was like trying to get his contact info or something like that. She was interested in him in some way. Like in no part of my brain was she like, yeah, this guy's gross. <laughs> Maybe they started the meme. Uh, the, uh, it's a, a video meme. I'm sure you're probably familiar with it if you've drowned yourself. And I don't even know when it was. Um, but it's uh, the video of uh, the two people standing far away from each other. And the guy's like, what's your name? He's like, oh, Tony. Hey. Like, fuck you, <laughs> Tony. Tony. <laughs> Maybe they were the original inspiration for the Maybe meme. The... Do you know what I did last night? You better not say masturbate on the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed my coffee. And then I masturbated on the balcony. <laughs> I, I imagine I imagine the potential of what she yelled at him was probably something along the lines of, you're a dirty pervert or something. And he's just like, oh, God, that's going to finish me off. Maybe maybe he thought that that was a good thing, that he was a dirty pervert. Like, oh, yeah, that, well, that's, that's really what I'm saying. For right, like, it wasn't, right. It wasn't supposed that's, to be something that finished him off, but it ended up it being did. his twisted right. mind. Right. Oh, man. So uh, th th those are the kind of things that came to mind when I first read this. Um, I, I don't know if you have anything else that stood out to you other than that man's poor, dick. wrinkly old dick. Nope. Well, he's 25, right? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's, 25. he's 25. So I, I guess everything's still kind of, you know, tight and in, in, in place. Um, right. He hasn't reached, I, I don't know, um, I don't know how much you want to disclose about your own personal health, but uh, I think I've started reaching the point where the water splashes when I'm taking a shit and it just kind of gets you a little bit. Again, sorry, Karen. <laughs> but uh, as, yeah. men, as men age, the grundle is going to get wetted by the process of taking a shit. <laughs> That is just, that's what happens, and I one day we're gonna get old enough, and if we were given enough skin to make it, uh, we might be uh, soaking the tea bag in the water. Well, maybe, maybe. I hope that's not the case, because otherwise I'm gonna have to like tuck it up on itself, and maybe get like a chip clip to clip in place so it doesn't hang that low. <laughs> you have plans far further into the future than I do, because I am taking a toaster bath long before that like 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 maybe maybe 70 maybe i want to see 70 but i'm like unsure about that even that just seems like too much life 
You're like, you're like, if I take a shit and then my ball bag drops into the water immediately after, like, well, I had planned on going to work today, but it's become evidently clear that this is the end, and now I need to just go kill myself. Also, Christ, if I'm still working when I'm 70, please, somebody just run me over with a truck. <laughs> right. Uh, I think that's kind of the, the general premise of being a millennial, is that we're just going to work till we just drop. And, yeah, that is what it is. Or take a toaster bath, as we all like to Ab- make joke about. Absolutely. Yeah, there there is there is no uh, pension waiting for us on the other side. Uh, there, all one, the company, all the companies are going to crash, and uh, we're going to be scavenging uh, like like rats. One of my favorite, um, um, uh, what is it called? Oh, trends. That's what it is. I'm too fucking old to know the word trends. Um, one of my favorite trends going around on TikTok is um, people who try to make inspirational videos, and they'll be like. If you've been looking for a sign, this is it. Take the jump. And then somebody will stitch into the video and be like, no, 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 no. That wasn't for us. That's not our, that's not our cue. This is not talking about that. Go about your day and continue what you were doing. And it's like, this is the algorithm. This is what I've built to represent the people that I'm looking for. Oh, Christ. Oh, man. So If we're in charge of sending the next satellite <coughs> out with... Uh, <coughs> Images and stuff for aliens to find. It's just going to be nothing but suicide jokes. Suicide jokes and unsolicited dick pics. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so. Well, I'm uh, I'm ready to move on from this guy's um, uh, trundle or whatever you want to call it. And uh, well, I guess I was going to say get to a better place, but the only place that's waiting for us is the the dark, deep pit of the worst of humanity. Yeah. Yep. And we, we find ourselves there. So at least we had like the soft the soft uh, entryway into the worst of humanity. So we're already we're already talking about public indecency and and uh, jacking off for your your uh, viewers at a hotel. I was gonna say a, your na- neighbors at the hotel. For so. any voyeurs out there, yeah, yeah. yeah well, I, I guess what you what you could consider this to be was foreplay, essentially. Absolutely. So should so, we dive in? Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say if you're ready, let's go. Yeah, let's dive into the worst of humanity. What uh, what did Kristen bring us this week? Oh my god, who thinks of this shit? Hey, quick, come here, take a look at this. Uh, why would you show me that? I don't want to suffer alone. This is the worst of humanity. Alright, so the the word she chose for us is uh, Dirty Jack, which may actually be related to what we uh, we just talked about. Right. Uh, so Dirty Jack, what first comes to mind? Uh, so maybe, maybe like she shits on your dick and then like jerks you off. Okay. That, that's yeah, a that's very, the, like a very the, literal translation of what it's it could be. Pretty, it's pretty tame. I'm hoping it's worse than that. Maybe we can work something out as we're going. No puns well, intended. Well, like I said, we we uh, Russ and I did thirty some episodes of this podcast before he decided that he had to focus elsewhere on other things. Um, but um, sorry, I just I lost my voice real temporarily. Um, but uh, we we talked or at least I had talked because I was really big on uh, making a, a compilation of all of the worst of humanity words because they're all sexual acts. Every one of them are. And uh, I was like, we need to do like a, a Kama Sutra parody um, and name it something like Could You Natra or something like that. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to have a compilation of these words of humanity terms um, that people can flip through. And if we can find an illustrator with a warped enough mind, maybe we could get some pictures drawn in there too. So what are you thinking? All right. So with a dirty jack. Uh, um, hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if shit was somewhere in it. I feel like when it comes to the awful things that are on, on Urban Dictionary, I feel like shit is so often involved. Um, I know there have been plenty of times where it's been like shitting into a condom, freezing it, and then pulling out and fucking your partner with it. Um, there's also been like the Alberta Chili Bowl, which I can't fully remember what that one was, but I suspected it was to get your partner's asshole gaping and then like eating out of their asshole or something. I think there was three people involved in that one. Um, I don't remember. The, there's so many things that have um, been mentioned and talked about at far greater lengths than they deserved. Um, so with a dirty jack, 
I think you might be right. I think that it could have to do with jerking off a dick maybe after being shit on. But I want to diversify a little bit because, uh, you know, the more bases we cover, the better the chance that we might hit on what it is. And I don't know if that's considered a win or not because if I come up with what it is exactly, I feel like I need to go therapy, like real therapy, <laughs> not like what I suggest that I should do. Um, I'm going to go with a different route with Jack instead of being jerking off. I wonder if it's like... A woman treats your dick like a um like a, a car jack, jack. Yeah. yeah like a car jack uh-huh. lever um i don't know what the purpose of of that motion is going to be because i can't feel good in fact i'm pretty sure um, <laughs> break your dick somewhere along the line i was just gonna say this might be getting the tmi but at some point every man has learned how to masturbate when you first discover its purpose and and the activity um I've, I when I feel like when I was learning how to jerk off, I don't remember what all steps I went through to figure out what feels good. Um, but I feel like at some point the thought occurred to me to kind of like lever it like that just to see what it was going to be like. I think I remember feeling like my dick was going to break in half. So I was that's, like, this that's, is that's definitely not one. the way. Yeah, that's, that's definitely not one. the way. Um, uh, um, I feel like, oh, I'm so sorry, Karen. This is and you can leave these apologies in. They're they're just as good content as anything else we've talked about. I just feel the need to apologize to our editor editor who's not simply just an editor, but my sister in law who I'm about to go visit uh, in Florida in a, a couple months here. So um, I'm going to subject her to all of these terrible things that I've said, not only about the content that we provided, but also you know my personal history of learning how to jerk off. And so she's got to listen to this episode and edit it. So um, your Welcome, or I'm sorry, whichever way you go with this. Not only to Karen, but our listeners. Thank you for yeah. sticking around. Well, honestly, the <laughs> listeners came on their own accord. She got paid to do this, so she's. Well, she's I hope they're coming on. Our, I hope they're coming on their own accord, because otherwise, uh, you're getting into harassment. If I don't know that people should be jerking off to what we're doing here this doesn't seem like material for that but i mean i guess i'm not here to kink shame so i I mean you keep referring to our voices as sultry so well today is especially deep on my end so um okay okay. so dirty jack uh, i i'm i'm feeling like um i feel like there's car oil involved too because you know if you're gonna treat it like you're a mechanic you need to really embrace the mechanic life and uh get some some car oil on there that's gonna do wonders for your skin i'm sure Okay, all right. Uh, I'm sure I'm far off base. You're probably a lot closer, but sure. I just wanted to cover a different view of it. So can we give a, a third a third opinion on this, mixing the two? Uh, what, it, what if uh, it involves actually anal, but you get shit on your dick, but then she like continues to move in a way like she's pumping your dick like a jack, but now it's just oh. dirty. Okay, there's a combination. I thought, I was so afraid because you started off in this episode talking about how your daughter is twisted because of the things that you find funny. And so you're like, can we get a third opinion in here? I was like, please, sweet Jesus, tell me that your nine-year-old is not sitting there listening to this conversation. And was like, excuse me, father, I think I might actually have a suggestion that this could be. If your kid shows up on if your kid shows up on camera, I'm I'm fucking out. This is the end of this podcast. I'm done. (laughs) I'm a bad parent. I'm not that bad of a parent. (laughs) You're a bad parent where people are gonna question your choices, but CPS isn't getting involved. Right. Right. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Well now I I think I'm ready for the truth now then now that we've covered a few bases here. Yep. Uh, do you want to do you want to do the the definition and the example, or do you want to yep, you want to do it? I can. All right, a dirty jack. When you bust a nut over your limited edition Samsung smart fridge, so your warm cum drips into the ice container, then you invite your neighbors over to watch a baked bean spin on the floor, and then you grab some ice to cool the their assholes off apparently because they've accidentally sat on the baked bean but instead of rubbing their asses it's warm cum so they'll get pregnant tell me how that works and shit out small african children even though none of your neighbors are african i should feel so racist this feels so racist i don't understand if it is or not Okay, I did a dirty jack yesterday. It was rather splendid, but unfortunately, I now have fifteen children living in my apartment. 
<laughs> and we're back to Chief's advice. Chief, I've got a new suggestion for you. It sounds like you have to participate in the Dirty Jack, and then you don't have to go through the adoption process. You're just going to have all of your neighbors produce African-American <laughs> children, even though none of them are African-American themselves. All it's going to take is shooting cum over very specifically, and this is important. It has to be a limited edition Samsung smart fridge. And your cum has to be warm. I don't know how warm. You're probably going to have to experiment a little bit, which means you're going to have to get a lot of friends to come over and let you put ice made of your sperm in their assholes. After watching a baked bean spin, I honestly don't know where the baked bean comes in or what that has to do with their assholes being needing to cool off. I don't know what's happening anymore. But you're the generous, nice neighbor who's going to rub ice on their asshole but it's warm cum, so they're going to get pregnant, and then they're going to have your African babies. This somehow makes sense in some universe. I don't. It's not here. It for sure isn't here. But that's 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 what Kristen gave us. So, would you I like to hear? Would you like to hear an alternative? Oh, we got an alternative. Yeah, by all means, we, if there's we, another one. There, uh, there's two alternatives here, so I'll give you both because oh, I, I feel like they're equally fucked up, but maybe make more sense. So, uh, the second definition is the act of shoving a stuffed squirrel in your dog's ass, therefore making him erect and forcing him to bone your sister while you jerk off in the corner. Okay, I, I, I have to come to Christian's defense in this. So, if for anyone who is, isn't familiar with this um, segment, other than from the first episode, my wife comes up with these, these words. I have her uh, troll urban dictionary to find the absolute worst. And the reason it's called Worst of Humanity is because people have gone out of their way to go to this website, create an account, and submit these definitions and these terms. These This website is the worst of humanity. This is where the worst of the worst come to declare their I, their their I don't even have a word for it um but I I want to come to Kristen's aid because there was a term that she was going to give us but then she looked it up um and this was a while back and it ended up being I can't remember what the word now was but it ended up involved something about finding a pregnant sea lion uh, fucking the shit out of her to induce labor, and then as the baby seal cubs come out, bashing them with a club and killing them. And she's like, we can't use that one. I said, no, if you gave me that one, I would have you committed to fucking psychiatric for it help. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna say she definitely didn't see that version of Dirty Jack. Nope. Um, I'm not sure which one's worse. Oh, God, the other one's bad, too. Oh, the yes, the third one, the third one. So this is probably the most tame of all three, and it's kind of a letdown after reading the other two. It's it's the act of specifically fucking a girl in a garden, and then she shoves a garden gnome up your ass. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? The what sentence does that have to do with Jack? I don't, the sentence. Yeah, he was with Grace last night. She pulled a proper dirty Jack, though. It's the kind of girl you take home to mom. That's right. <laughs> The kind that would before or after, before out, before or after you remove the lawn gnome. Uh, well, I guess it depends on how much of um of a close relationship you have with your mother. Um, I feel like if she's cool with uh, watching you walk around with a giant um gnome in your pants, um, maybe that's not going to be asked about. Um, I feel like you should probably remove it because your asshole, its purpose is to stay tight. And if you leave something in there, it's going to claim it for itself. For sure. There's, okay. a, there's a Sarlacc pit that you cannot escape out of. So well, I'm going to say of the three choices, Kristen probably meant the first. I'll verify I'm with sure. her when we get off of here. For sure. You have done it. I asked for the most fucked up thing you could find, and that is specifically fucked up in its own way. I liked how it's, it's, it's just so specific that you have to nut over... A specific refrigerator, and then it has to. You can't just jerk off into the ice container. You it's have to drip jerk down off in, and drip yeah. into it. So your door has to be somewhat loose, or your semen really fucking like fucking fluid. Right. And uh, and then and I then, don't know. We're, we're watching a baked bean spin on the floor for some reason. And then we're gonna hope that after that baked bean gets done spinning, it's still hot enough that when your neighbor and why is it burning your neighbor's asshole? Is your neighbor naked? That brings up a whole another. A whole other line of thinking. Okay, so 
as you can see, baked bean is um, in a blue text, which indicates that it's a link to another term. Okay. And I was curious. I was like, so maybe baked bean doesn't mean an actual baked bean. It's so much worse than a baked bean. A baked bean is a stone Mexican, according to Urban Dictionary. Oh, okay. So in, in this... So you're watching a stone Mexican break dance on the floor, and then you're rubbing ice on your neighbor's assholes afterward? Because they accidentally sat on this person? There's other answers, but none of them are good. One of them is just like an uh, English dish on toast. Another one is uh, nature's way of saying, for God's sake, open a window, which I I think they mean like shitting your your pants or something. I don't know. I don't know. Um means to do ecstasy there's no good reason that this is anything other than a baked bean that you consume um it doesn't make any more sense than anything else so it could very well be anything else because when we come to the worst of humanity there are no rules it's, it's a freak for all at this point it, it really is so all right. that's all i've got I, <laughs> yeah i can we exit please the exit and go like, seek professional therapy. Yes, might be unlike might be unlike, the unlike the therapy that we provide. I think we should see <laughs> uh, actual licensed professionals. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Go ahead, go ahead and take us out of here. And while you're um, while you're, you're closing us out, I'm gonna start looking for anyone who might be 24 hours because um, we're at nine o'clock at night at this point. So we're gonna we're gonna need to pay some big bucks for the the 24 hour therapy. For sure. Well, Jesus fucking Christ, guys. That was one hell of a ride. Um, thank you so much again for the listeners submitted content. Um, to Brock, to my D&D crew, to Chief, uh, and to everyone else who has submitted stuff that I haven't covered yet. And any of our any of our fans out there who would like to submit content, they can find us on Anthony Knows These Socials so much more. Uh, I mean, I only created that I them. So. Yeah, that's why you would know them intimately. Maybe you can throw a link for them. Um, well, I, I would spit links out, um, but it's just going to be a bunch of letters and numbers nobody's going to write down. So I will tell you that if you want to find us over at Facebook, uh, Instagram, or TikTok, where we don't yet have content that Justin and I have made, however, we are in talks of what kind of content would be fun to watch. There are a few uh, videos of there on uh, on there of me and Russ. Um, one such video is me trying to take a shot. Um, when we decided that doing shots in the opening of the episode would be a fun way to open it that would be different. Um, and uh, I tried to take a shot, but it was so full I didn't want to pick it up and spill it everywhere. So instead, I tried to take it with my mouth and just throw my head back and then instead spit half of it all over the table. Um, that video is on there. The video of us doing the one chip challenge is on there. Um, I compared it, I think, to licking Satan's taint or something. Uh, that's a good good laugh on there. We have a, both a short version and the long, like, seven-minute version if you want to watch the whole thing. And uh, I posted how I went to try to spread the podcast with QR codes and cash boxes along a geocaching trail and ended up getting sucked into the, the earth instead in a mud pit. So that's documented on there for your enjoyment as well. And uh, Justin and I will find uh, more stuff. I think when we get together, we're gonna I'm going to teach you how to use TikTok because you're still new to it. Um, yeah, I'm a noob. But we'll make some content and uh, maybe try some, some dumb things and uh, see if we um, don't die in the process. But in any case, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, TikTok, all at Overdue for Extinction. You can follow us on Twitter, where we kind of post updates um, about uh, anything that's coming up with the show. Maybe in the future, if we run some kind of contest or something, you can find that there. Um, but you can follow that at O4EPod. That's O, the number four, E, pod, as in podcast. Uh, that's Twitter. Uh, I think that's all of our accounts, right? Yep, and if you want to find me personally, you can find me at the spectral vagabond at both instagram and tiktok and as anthony has said i am a noob to tiktok but uh hope to bring you guys some fun content there and uh, otherwise just uh, updates and just crazy dumb shit that i get into in general uh you can find on uh, my stories on insta so but thank you so much for tuning in this week and we hope to have you back here next week Sure, I didn't want to plug my socials or anything. Oh, no, go for it, Anthony. <laughs> Anthony, by all means. 
Uh, I don't really do a whole lot on Instagram or TikTok. I have kind of the same videos on TikTok that you'll see on uh, the uh, podcast TikTok. But if you are interested, I'm thinking about coming up with other content if I can ever find free time to remember to breathe again uh, or not be sick. That would be great, too. Um, but you can find me at unfeeling dragon, all one word, um, on both, uh, Instagram and TikTok. Most of my Instagram is posting memes because I don't do anything worth posting and I'm not, uh, I don't post uh, my tits out for views. So, I mean, if you like it, I'll start doing it, but, um, I'm not going to do it without some reward. So you're going to have to give daddy some cheese if you want to see the mouse. Like we said, only fans folks. I mean, if you're willing to pay, I will take my dick out on a balcony. Um, probably not, but I'll, I'll at least put a green screen so it looks like I'm on the balcony. And then I think it turns into the shouting meme again. I, we're, we just keep coming back to that. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to be like looking at you while we're jerking off, even in gesture. That this seems a bit a bit too extreme for my taste. But uh, if oh, the people want to pay, I was gonna go with lewd, not nude content, but whatever. Oh, just a little, like a like a half little, nipple little, or something. Little tease. Okay, just a little tease. All right, we'll, 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 we'll figure tease. it out. Just submit your, your desires. Um, I, I want to real quick one before we go to, I want to mention that um, we have uh, a lot of segments. That we, what we've done uh, last episode and this episode are not the only segments we have. Um, we're carrying a lot of the old segments over from what Russ and I did. Um, and so you'll see those periodically through the, um, episodes as we get rolling here. Um, if you have any ideas that you want to submit for those segments, such as if you have funny one star reviews that you find on like Amazon or another thing, uh, weird inventions, we have a, um, a segment called foolproof, which is weird things that people make. There's a, there's a whole lot of, um, and if you go to our discord, which obviously we can't provide a link for because it's numbers and letters and no one cares. If you go to our Facebook um, or our Twitter, I have pinned tweets, I believe, or pinned posts that you can find that uh, that link. So um, that uh, is um, where uh, Justin reigns supreme in sharing a whole lot of memes that are a bit spicy for uh, social media platforms that may otherwise disband the accounts if we were uh, to post them there. I am your meme lord or daddy, whichever you prefer. Yeah, we 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 uh, we created this very specific channel in our Discord server so that you could post anything without, um, I would say without judgment. But when it, some of the things that I see on there, I'm just like, I should be associated with these people. My mother would be so disappointed. My goal is to bring you something every day that questions. Be everything you know about yourself you're gonna read it you're gonna laugh you're gonna feel horrible and then you're gonna reflect on the type of person you've become i decided i had to be um on par with the shit that you were submitting the one day so i looked up a meme for jesus's hands holes <laughs> and it said it says jesus don't look at me while i'm masturbating and he puts his hands up to his <laughs> eyes to cover his face but he's got the holes that he's watching through and somebody commented on the meme and said what those hand holes do though <laughs> for sure for sure <laughs> Uh, I, I think that's going to do it for us, buddy. I'm ready to get out because uh, therapy is now needed more than ever. So. Abs absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, give us a like, give us a follow, and give us five stars on uh, whatever uh, podcast platform you're listening to that will help us out a lot, and uh, we love you guys. For sure. Stay smart and uh, stay safe, most importantly. All right. Bye. Overdue for extinction.